are those who say we must balance the budget on the backs of the workers and raise taxes again. But they are wrong. I am not going to raise your taxes, period. Read my lips. No new taxes. Treff, good morning. Good morning. I would like to know, what are we going to do to bring our prices of gas down? It's gotten too hot. Yeah. And tell me about your feelings about the, de uh, the, the taxes on uh, gasoline and what do you expect it to be? We sure don't know from this thing you did at 3 o'clock this morning. Well, the original proposal was that the gasoline tax at 9 cents now per gallon would be raised 5 cents uh, next year and then 5 cents the following year to 19 cents. I think that is ridiculous with these oil companies making windfall profits. I think they should be investigated and put in jail for antitrust violations. Doesn't, doesn't this whole Persian Gulf thing evolve around one three-letter word, O-I-L, oil? I think that's part of it, but remember, we get very little oil, America oil, from the Gulf. Japan and Germany get almost 70% of their oil from the Gulf, and we're putting, out of 200,000 troops in Saudi Arabia, 165,000 of them are American soldiers. They're on the line over 80%. Let me say this. I think we should participate around the world to protect the interests and free the, of the free world. But all other nations should participate. And it shouldn't be our kids coming home in body bags. Let me... Uh... Here's what you said about that uh, from the floor of the House of Representatives on Thursday night. Here's the congressman from Youngstown. There are 200,000 troops over in the Persian Gulf. 165,000 of them are American. This is a world problem. Let the world pay for it. Our kids keep coming back in body bags, and our taxpayers keep financing it. Let the United Nations work. 165,000 Americans is ridiculous. Let's get more people from other countries over there. And I say shut it down. It's better than crippling this nation's freedom with a bad bill. For the uh, record, the district that uh, Congressman Trafficat represents, as he's told us a moment ago, voted for a uh, voted uh, Democrat in the presidential election in uh, 80, 84, and 88. How does it feel to be on the short end of the last three presidential elections? This is one of the few congressional districts in the nation Phil, to have not, voted Democratic. Our community is not on the short end. Our community made a decision, and they didn't buy the free lunch promises. And there are no free lunches. And I think our people live through very tough time. They're working people. They expect nothing for nothing. We're willing to work. But we don't want that song and dance before the elections anymore. We want the facts. Hi. Our, com our honorable traffic, our community, community has been hit hard with medical bills. What are we going to do about a national health program or a state health program? And another thing I want to say, JFK said, ask not what you can do for your country, but what can you... No, what you can do for you? What can you do for your country? How about the politicians taking that same attitude? What can you do, not just for yourselves, but for the taxpayers, for the people? We are people power. We are the government. Let's all fight for that. Our, I lost a brother-in-law for world in World War II. What did he die in vain? Well, I think you bring up a good point. Many Americans say, "Look, we won the war, but did we?" We financed Japan and Germany. Now they're, they have great surpluses with us in trade. They, they buy our T-bills and finance our debt. Uh, when you own something, you control something. When you have economic control, you have political control. We have an awful lot of problems. But what I want to say to you is basically this. I didn't like the fact of putting all of those taxes, such as beer, alcohol, cigarettes, gasoline, if we had to do something like that to create a national health insurance program, the American people might buy it. 
But I think it's time the American people understand what the program is, how they participate, and what the policies are, and that they not only understand it, but they have a say in developing them. And I think if the American people understand it, they're willing to pay for those things that are important to them, right. no please, more, no less. Please give me a couple of specifics, so get to your second here. Your position regarding the Persian Gulf, um, what is your understanding of the percent, of, of, all, of all the troops arrayed in the Saudi desert, what percentage are American? About 82 percent at this point. And how do you feel about that? Well, I think it's absolutely ridiculous. Not that we don't want to stop an aggressor that has moved on a sovereign nation, but we have many nations around the world that are concerned about this aggression. I think they should all be participating in like kind, and it shouldn't be America always coming out with the checkbook and with the with our soldiers and our troops and our young people to pretend to protect the interests of the world. Yeah. Were you consulted when we bombed Tripoli? Not at all. Were you consulted when we invaded Panama? Not at all. Were you consulted when we invaded Grenada? Not at all. Well, where were you then? How come you're not screaming? You're well, the president, only in the Congress. The president is the commander-in-chief. We have a War Powers Act after 60 days that they have to bring it back to the Congress to continue that type of involvement. However, the administrative uh, White House people are trying to contest that now on its constitutionality. Let me say this to you. We made an awful lot out of Grenada. The Youngstown Police Department could have invaded Grenada successfully. We're now... We're now talking about a defense. I'm more concerned about people jumping the fence coming into America, a stupid Congress giving them citizenship, and we're going bankrupt. I'd like to see us take our troops from overseas. Hear me, take our troops from overseas, cut down on all that expense over there. Those are nothing but welfare programs for those overseas countries. Our soldiers are paying their checks, they're cashing their checks, spending their money over there. Bring them back, put them on our borders, keep the drugs out, keep people from coming in here illegally, take care of our country. That's common sense. Phil, I think it's a tragedy that you've become a shill for Jimbo. I think you've sacrificed your credibility for ratings. Hey, Jim, make his point. that's right, you're holding a political rally here. Jim, you said you're, sheriff, you're still sheriff. Does that mean that you're still taking money from the mob? The people in this country need to know. He beat the rap. He's no, li no, listen. There's a that, federal that's court that's found that he accepted bribes. The federal, the federal, there's a federal tax court using the standard of proof that we use in our everyday life has found that he accepted bribes. Hang on a minute. Hey, I can explain this. They're not going to know what you're talking about across let me, America. Uh, they got enough crime to let, worry let about without worrying. Please let me in here a second. Let me respond to this fellow. The congressman was accused of taking uh, mob money and beat the rap. He was found innocent. Now, wait a minute. Hold on a minute. One second. Listen, it, we're nothing if we're not honest. He did get nailed on an income tax charge, and he's paying his bill. All right. Uh, let me respond. Bill, yeah. Bill, let me okay. respond. Mr. Let me respond Mr. One congressman, time. in all due respect for... In all due respect to you, you told me when you first ran for office that you controlled the minds of the non-thinkers in this community. Why can't you go to Washington and control the idiot minds of the pseudo-thinkers in the nation's capital? Congressman, you're on. Number one, number one, the second fella has... Number one, the second fella has just brought up a point that is ludicrous. He happens to be a member of a Jewish descent. The Jews are very upset with what I've done, and he's trying to take it out, and I'm not going to back down to any powerful group. Number one. Number two. Number two. The first fellow that asked the question was an attorney. And let me tell you what, if you're an attorney, I wouldn't want you defending me because you sounded like a fool. And finally, I want to make this statement. This is America. When you're tried by a jury of your peers, that's sacrosanct. 
Thomas Jefferson made a statement that I want you to remember as an attorney. He said, God forbid the appointment of federal judges for life because they can take the Constitution and mold it like clay in their hands. Thank God for juries. Now, one other thing. Wait a minute. One other thing. One other thing. I'm not an attorney, and I stood on my own two feet. I looked him in the eye, and that's what we've got to start doing with our damn government now. Yeah. No. Congressman. And don't what? get me mad. Hold it. <laughs> Congressman. What is the what is the uh, what is the reference to Jews? Explain that to us. It's That's... not a derogatory fashion, but this individual has been a member of an opposing party that's been challenging me. Who who has? Uh, one of the individuals asked asked the question. Well, why don't you I've... tell us who he is? Uh, fine, uh, Mr. Rubenstein. Well, he's come out. He's come out. He says he's a Democrat. Why would you make it a Jewish issue? I'm not making it a Jewish issue. He happens to be of Jewish descent. Because of my involvement in a couple cases, I have been targeted by the World Jewish Congress. I've just come to learn through the grapevine. I'm not sure that the American-Israeli Public Affairs Committee has targeted me. And usually when they do, they beat a congressman. But let me say this. You have I, not then I, been supportive in Phil. your voting let record me, for uh, uh, Israel. Is that your point? Let me say this, and this is very important to me. I've been called an anti-Semite. The next person in New York calls me an anti-Semite, I'm going to drive up there and punch him in the mouth. Number one. Number two, let me say one other thing. I have looked into a couple cases. I've looked into a couple cases, and I'm not going to apologize for it. And I am going to say something here today that's very unusual. I think the American-Israeli Public Affairs Committee has too much control, like many other lobbies, on our Congress in the government. The lady behind me, Mr. Congressman, the lady behind me said, you Jews, you attorneys, you blacks, you're all alike. That's what you bring out in people. You just... The seed of hatred and the seed of bigotry that everyone carries around, you cultivate. You will turn, you'll turn on Eastern Europeans, you'll turn on labor, you'll turn on blacks, you'll turn on anyone because you are a, a political opportunist. And the last time I said it, I got threatening phone calls. Right. Hey, Phil, and Phil, I want to answer that. I think I deserve an answer. Here's my answer. This is my answer. And we'll be back in just a moment. To be part of the audience, write Donahue Tickets, care of NBC, New York, New York, 10112. We're in Youngstown, Ohio, with Congressman James Trafficant. Yes, sir. Uh, Congressman Trafficant, I've been a supporter of you, well, since before you were sheriff, when you were down in Mill Creek Park. Uh, I just want to let you know, I'm a federal employee, and because of the votes, I'm officially right now out of work. But I still support you because you stand up for the working man. I look at my paycheck with all my tax deductions, and I think, where is this money really going? And I want to, and I would like to think that most of it is staying here in the United States, but I don't see that. Keep up the good work anyway, and try to get me back to work, okay? Let me, let me make this statement. Congressman Trafficant, I just always wondered about the feasibility of cutting government aids in your offices, transportation, and perks of government offices and jobs like that. Couldn't that help find some more money for our budget? The, the staffs are too large, you think? Yeah, the staff, the perks, the, the limousines, the... The transportation, all of your perks, if all of the Congress and Senators gave up their perks, couldn't that help our budget, and to what extent? I think there's no question that it could, and we should. Uh, yes, sir. I'd like to ask the Congressman, is he still sleeping on the couch? <laughs> yes. No, I'm sleeping in an old wooden boat, and I'm afraid it's going to sink. Yes. I, Congressman, 
Congressman Trafficant, I think what you have done for this state, some of those people, like, they don't, they don't appreciate what you have done. 